Hey, it's Amy. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my current easy long run shoe rotation. I'm going to cover briefly each shoe that I wear and why I enjoy wearing them and maybe a few cons about them. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified every time I upload a new video. So let's talk about my easy long run shoes. that I'm going to share about is the New Balance 880 and this is the version 11. I've had about three versions of this shoe and it's just one of those shoes that has never let me down. And I probably will always have some version of this in my shoe rotation. The 880 uses a dual layer midsole construction. So there's a soft bed foam on the top and then the fresh foam underneath. I find this provides a soft cushioning but also being very stable too. It does provide enough cushioning or at least I found that I've done lots of long runs in this shoe. It has a traditional upper and it just feels really comfortable and really secure around my foot. The laces are really long on the 880 version 11 which is nice especially if you do a heel lock or some sort of heel lacing different technique. As I said, I used to do most of my long runs in this shoe, but now tend to use some of my other shoes and save this mostly for my easy midweek runs. After I've retired these from running, I love to use them for the gym as again, it doesn't have a super high stack height and I feel just nice and secure like from lateral movement. So I just feel like it's a good one for moving around or if I'm jumping up and down and it just has a, again, with the upper, it's just a secure feel. So if it's not completely dead, I use it for gym or walking. A few cons of the 880 is that I find it a bit heavy. It's not the heaviest shoe in my rotation, surprisingly enough, but it just, yeah, it's not the lightest of shoes. I actually had to go up a half size in the 880 version 11 as I find the upper just fits a bit short and a bit snug so my toes felt a little squished and ended up meaning I got an 8 instead of my usual 7.5. While I was fine doing long runs in this shoe, if you need more of a maximal kind of cushion shoe, then maybe I would look at something with a little bit more of a stack height. A lot of shoes now have this kind of rounded bottom to it, which helps with the heel to toe transition. And this one's pretty flat, as you can see. <laughs> So a few specs about the 880 is that it's 8.6 ounces or 244 grams. And the stack height is 34 millimeter in the back and 24 millimeter in the forefront. It has a heel drop of 10 millimeters, which is actually the highest heel drop that I have. And heel drop basically just means the distance from the heel to toe has nothing to do with the stack height here. People say that a higher heel drop tends to put more of the weight or the stress on your hips and your knees. So 10 millimeter is near on the higher, around eight is kind of in the middle of heel drops, which a lot of my shoes, yeah, a lot of my shoes are eight mil drops. In general, I've always really enjoyed the 880 from New Balance. While it may not be my top favorite shoe of all times, it's just one that has never, as I said, let me down. It's sturdy, it's dependable, and and it's a great shoe for easy runs or even long runs too. The Nova Blast 2. Asics gave me these in August and I am so glad that I have them. I've been wanting to try them as I heard a lot of great things about them and I can say that I've really enjoyed running in these. No offense to Asics, but I really have never just gravitated towards their shoes. Don't get me wrong, I've had an Asics shoes in the past and I can't remember which one, but there were lots of cushion in them, but just heavy and clunky and not the prettiest looking shoes either. But look at these ones, these are so cool. Like I think these are awesome. They are soft, responsive, and while I haven't done a super long run in them, I think the farthest I've gone in these is probably probably 15 kilometers, but I could easily do a long run in them. I just haven't for some reason, no idea why. <laughs> 
They use their FF Blast cushioning in the midsole, and again, I found it really responsive and really enjoyable to run in. The traction is good on them, I have no complaints about that, though I probably wouldn't run in the snow in them, but regular days with no snow, they're fine. Even I haven't run in them in the rain, but I think they would be fine too. So I got my usual size 7.5, and, and for me personally, I like having about a centimeter or a thumbnail width between my big toe and the end of the shoe. Some people can go a little shorter, but honestly, any shorter than that, you can get black toes and blisters, and so the safest bet, at least I find, is a centimeter or, again, thumbnail width between your big toe and the end of the shoe when you're standing up and all your weight is on your feet. I honestly don't have that much to complain about. Yeah, really, really like these shoes. <laughs> I guess my only worry would be is that they might get a little warm in the summer. The upper isn't like the lightest or thinnest, but I haven't run in the dead of heat, but that might be my only worry is just I might get warm in the summer in these. So this actually has a heel drop of 8mm, which is shocking because ASICS tends to be really high heel drops, like 12 or even 13 I've seen, which is crazy to me. It weighs 8.2 ounces, so lighter than the New Balances, or 232 grams. It also has a stack height of 29mm and 21 millimeters. Again, I highly recommend giving the Nova Blast 2s a try. I just find they last and feel good for the entirety of my easy run, so I'm really glad I have this in my easy long run shoe rotation. I've had, again, many versions of this shoe. I think my first one was the Clifton 6. This came out this year and I'm really glad I have this pair in my rotation. The Clifton 8 is extremely lightweight and the upper is really breathable and the midsole, they use an EVA midsole and it's super soft and really enjoyable to run in. The Clifton 8 also has this early stage meta rocker which basically helps you be more efficient from your heel to toe transition. You can kind of see it has a little bit of a rocker bottom to it. Some people say that a lower drop shoe tends to promote a more midfoot strike as it kind of rolls you off your heel, especially if you tend to heel strike. I personally just like using different heel drops as that's an injury prevention technique. I won't say it prevents all injuries, but the more you give your body something to adjust to, the better. I do want to highly suggest that if you haven't worn a low drop shoe and you suddenly buy one like the Clifton 8 for example, I would do some shorter runs in it. Lower drop shoes tend to use different muscles like your calves and your Achilles. It could cause some issues as your body isn't used to using those muscles that a lower drop shoe uses. Also, if you've had Achilles or calf issues, I would not use a low drop shoe as that kind of might flare it up because it does use the kind of lower muscles of your legs a bit more than a higher drop shoe. I find that the Clifton fits long, so I go down to a size 7 in the Clifton and even the Bondi and the Mach 4 and the Carbon X2, all the Hoka shoes that I own, I've gone down to a 7. Hoka just fits roomier in general, so if you have a slightly wider foot, you might really enjoy the width that it gives your foot and especially in the toe box. Honestly, the traction is pretty good. The Clifton 6s that I got, I wore them the all winter long and it was fine. I mean, not on super icy days, but it did me well. So I really have no complaints. It's pretty good traction. So good for that. <laughs> My main complaint about the Clifton 8 is that it has this raised kind of arch in the inside. I personally have a slightly flatter foot, so I just find that after maybe about 15 to 20 kilometers, I really, really feel that pressure on my lower arch. I don't know why they decided to do this. Like my husband really wanted to get a pair, but he also felt the raised arch. So I don't know why it's there. It's really kind of annoying, but maybe if you have a higher arch, you might like that kind of raised arch feeling and you might like the support of it. So I personally can't do long runs in this shoe anymore because, or plus 20 kilometers run in these because it just hurts my foot. So that's kind of frustrating because I do love the Clifton's and Hoka shoes in general, but 
it just hurts. It has a heel drop of 5mm, which surprise surprise, isn't the lowest drop that I have in my rotation. It weighs 7.2 ounces or 202 grams, and it's the lightest shoe that I have in my easy long run shoe rotation. It has a stack height of 29mm and 24mm. I barely feel this on my feet when I run, it's just so light and just soft and responsive. So if you've never tried a Hoka shoe before, I highly suggest getting a Clifton as your kind of intro into the Hoka world, as it is such a unique shoe, but I do really love this shoe except for the raised arch, but give it a try, see if you like it because it's been a super popular shoe and this is my third version, so I do really enjoy this shoe. Nike Invincibles. These are probably one of my favorite shoes outside of the Nike Vaporflies that I raced Boston in, but surprise, surprise, these have the same kind of midsole as them, so not surprising, I guess, that I love these shoes so much. Yes, they look like a lot of a shoe, but can you see a trend in my shoes? I love cushioning, and I think, especially for long runs, easy runs, it's just so nice on the body just to have that extra cushioning that just takes away some of the impact and especially if your legs are tired, it just feels so good. The Zoomex foam that's found in the midsole is found, as I mentioned, in their racing shoes like the Vaporfly or the Alpha Fly. However, they've created more durable outsole, so it lasts a bit longer than, say, their racing shoes, which they try to make as light as possible. These are still pretty light, but I mean, not as light as the Vaporfly. I love that Nike has created this wider base at the bottom, which gives you this nice and stable feeling. Again, you look at this and you're like, whoa, this must be so flimsy, but it's not. It's really, really comfortable, and I feel safe, and I've never felt unstable in these shoes. They have that kind of rocker on the bottom as a lot of my shoes do or a lot of running shoes do nowadays and it can helps you be more efficient. The cushioning is very responsive and just kind of like bounces you along in your run. The traction is pretty good. It kind of looks like Lego. Does that make sense? <laughs> Anyways, I've had no complaints from the traction. There's just a few cons about this shoe is that I wish the waffle upper was a little lighter. It's just a little bit thicker than maybe some of my other, like the Clifton 8s. You can kind of see there's a little bit more, you uh, can't really see, but there's a little bit more breathable or holes, I guess, but uh, that would be one of the main things is just the upper. This is actually my second pair. I used to have the Rodacious, which is the white, pink color from like the Olympics, but the outsole ripped. Uh, I think it was on here, on the outside here. It just ripped, which is shocking because, you know, they're not a cheap shoe and I was just running regularly, but I got a replacement. So that's one con is that it did rip there. It weighs 8.9 ounces or 253 grams. One of the heavier shoes in my rotation, but it doesn't feel heavy at all. It has a heel drop of eight millimeters and the stack height is 36.6 millimeters and 27.6 millimeters. While this is a slightly pricier shoe because it uses their premium Zoomex foam, it's an awesome shoe and I'm really, really glad I have it. And again, it's probably one of my favorite shoes to run in for easy long run shoes and it's just very comfortable. So I, I love it. How about you? Have you tried the Nike Invincible? Let me know in a comment below. Saucony Endorphin Shift 2. This is the second version I've had and it's part of Saucony's Endorphin Collection. The Endorphin Collection has been super popular and I personally own every single shoe in that collection from the Shift for easy long run shoes to the Speed for speed workouts days and the Pro for race day. Though honestly, I just use the Speed and Pro for both workouts and speed days. I think one of my favorite features of this shoe is a speed roll technology. It is quite, I don't like the word aggressive, but it really does help you roll you along. And just if you're feeling tired, again, just helps you be more efficient and just keep running, rolling, etc. I cannot wait for the version three to come out next year, but so far away. It has a generous amount of power run cushioning in the midsole. And while it's not like as soft as maybe the Invincible, it still has a good amount of cushioning. And honestly, I did most of my long runs in this shoe earlier this year. The cushioning is kind of 
firm at the beginning and it gets better as you run if that makes sense. It looks like a lot of shoe but I've never felt unstable. Sockening calls the structured cushioning and so while it's not a stability shoe, the way or where they've put the cushioning helps prevent any lateral movement and helps you just streamline forwards because when we run, we run forwards. So that's kind of nice as you can see around the heel counter here is kind of this harder plastic which again helps prevent any movement. So I feel nice and secure and not unstable despite its stack height. My main complaint about this shoe is probably the traction. I find that it's not as grippy as I would like it to be and I don't run in it if it's raining outside or wet. Maybe that's just me but I just don't feel like I get enough grip to be really secure in these shoes in the rain. Another thing is that I find the upper fits a little snug or a little tight so I probably would go up to an eight next time. I got a seven and a half but I think just to have a little bit more room, I would get a half size up. My husband also found that he got a lot of blisters on his toes when he was running in these shoes in the dead heat of summer, so maybe the upper could be maybe a little lighter. I wouldn't say that the firmness of the shoe is a con because I really enjoy it, but if you prefer maybe a softer cushioning, then maybe you might do better with the Invincible or the Clifton 8, for example. It weighs 9.2 ounces or 253 grams. So this is the heaviest shoe in my rotation. It doesn't feel heavy on my shoe, but if I go from maybe like the Clifton 8 or in one of my speed workout shoes to this, then I do feel the heaviness of this shoe. It has a stack height of 38 millimeters and 34 millimeters, and has a heel drop four millimeters, which is the lowest drop in my rotation. In general, I have loved the Shift 2, and I probably will get the next version or every version they come out with, but I really enjoy this for easy long run shoes, so if you haven't given it a try, I highly recommend giving the Shift 2 a try. Nitrate Deviate. Puma sent me these shoes in August and I was really excited to try them as I had never run in a pair of Puma running shoes. There's some really cool features about the DV8 and I really enjoyed running in these. One of my favorite things about these shoes is the Puma grip. Oh my word, they have the best traction. I've honestly run in the pouring rain in these shoes or when it was just a little wet outside and felt completely fine, like not slippery at all. It uses their nitro foam and it's really comfortable and responsive. This inner plate is actually a carbon fiber plate in its midsole and that gives you kind of more responsivity and helps you be more efficient in your running as carbon fiber plates does that. It's surprising as carbon fiber plates I don't usually run my easy runs in it but for some reason I don't find or mind the plate in these ones and I don't find it kind of responsive enough to do speed workouts in it but I do still like running in these shoes. I just don't find it quite as snappy as I would like in a kind of carbon plated shoe or compared to say like the Pro or other carbon plated shoes that I run in. The way they've done the upper is that it's just, it's nice and reflective. So in the dark, it has these nice kind of reflective material or details on it. So it kind of helps you be more visible. I didn't know if they fit long, so I got an eight just to be safe, but I could have worn the seven and a half. I think maybe next time I'd get the seven and a half, but I'm not too upset wearing a size eight in these either. A few cons about this shoe. I don't find them as soft as other shoes in my collection, but I still really enjoy running in them. They're super light, but they don't feel really light, if that makes sense. I don't know if you can see it, but it has this like pads on the inside on the heel. Not sure I'm a fan of it because like, it kind of like bumped out a little bit and I don't know, maybe it's to help with the fit, but for me, I don't, it, I don't necessarily need that. That's just an interesting choice they've made to put those in there. I feel the plate in other shoes more than these ones, so maybe it's just, maybe their race shoe is better. Obviously, Molly Seidel does really well in them, and it's probably just me, but I just don't find that they're my top pick for a speed workout shoe. So that's why I put them in my easy shoe rotation. 
This weighs about 7.7 .7 ounces or 218 grams. It has a stack height of 34 millimeters and 24 millimeters and has a heel drop of 8 millimeters. Again, I've really enjoyed running in the Puma shoes as they were my first pair and I'm excited to keep running in them and excited to maybe try some of their other shoes, not the Deviates, but maybe some of the more speed workout shoes, but I'll let you know if I end up getting another pair. Well, it's not necessary to have all the shoes that I currently have in my own shoe rotation, but I do strongly strongly suggest having at least a couple pairs of different heel drops or just different brands of shoes that gives your body something to adjust to. Especially if you're doing back-to-back -back runs and your mileage is building or getting higher and higher. How about you? What shoes are you using for your easy runs or your long runs? Tell me in a comment below. Happy running and I'll see you next time.